Hello and welcome to the final video in this series. To anyone that's new over here, there's a link in the description down below for the entire playlist. And for anyone who's coming here from my previous videos, I feel like you should probably subscribe and like this video because yeah, I think like you're into this stuff. If you don't know what's going on, this was the reference image we're using and this is what we have achieved so far. So if this is something that you don't know how to achieve in Blender, then this is probably a good series for you. Let's try to not waste any time. Let's just shift right click here and create a cylinder. Rotate it and make it small. And I'm going to give it some color so I can actually take a look at it over here. I need it to be over here on this thing. Extrude it up, duplicate it, rotate by 90. Get into wireframe mode and just delete only faces. Select all of these edges, right click, bridge edge loops. Increase the number of cuts. Two is still not enough, so I'm just gonna do four. Select this edge at the end and just extrude it onward and just move it till it's out of view. Now get into front view, select faces. So just select all of these top faces and duplicate them. Press P to separate them into a different object. Select that new object we just made, get into edit mode and just scale it up slightly. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of these over here and move them in. I'm gonna give this the white material that we made so I can better see this thing. Just move this over so it's barely covering it. And let's do the same to this side. Okay, so let's move this thing over. It's right on the edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scale these up along the Z axis and along the X axis, along the Y axis as well. So once I'm somewhat happy with this, I'm gonna select these bottom edges over here on both sides and extrude them down. You don't really need to go this far down, just make sure that it's, you know, just make sure that it's far enough down so it's not visible in the camera. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create more geometry over here because right now it's really not enough for sculpting. So just click on this inflate option, lower the strength down to zero, turn on dino topo, come over here, change this from relative to constant detail and say around 15 should be good enough, actually around 30. So with the strength down at zero, I'm just gonna hover over this, not hover over this, but like paint over this. And this will create the geometry. I'm going to use the cloth brush over here. So just scale it up and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my click here and just drag it down. But as you can see, this actually causes this entire thing to fall down from the pole. So the first thing I'm gonna do is press M to mask, get, in, get into top view, scale this down. So it's like a smaller radius with F and just paint these top edges over here. So now whenever I do something, these top edges don't move. Using the cloth brush again, scaling it up. I'm gonna clear the mask. Squish them together a bit. This backside right now doesn't really have the geometry that we need, but that's okay. All right, let's try to fix this up now so it can actually fit on this pole. And doing that is really simple. Just select everything and scale it up. Scale it up along the Y axis. Move it over a bit as well. Move it up. These areas, however, I'm gonna fix it with sculpting. So just press G and grab these bits out. And finally, I'm gonna use the smooth brush here, but with a lower strength and just smooth all of these edges over a little bit. I'm also gonna shade smooth, turn on auto smoothing, add in a solidify modifier, lower the thickness a bit, to around half of the usual amount. This vertex over here, so in, if you don't wanna use sculpting tool, you can just G, Z, and make this tiny, and do that. I'm gonna select some of these edges over here that are causing some issues, and just move them out a bit, just to add some variation to it. The subsurface division modifier over here doesn't really make that much of a difference, but you know, it's okay. With the viewport setting over here in the subdivision surface modifier, I'm gonna change it down to zero so it doesn't slow down the viewport. And for the other tall, I'm just gonna duplicate this over, move it here, scale it up. And with proportional editing, I'm gonna move some of these bits out. That did create enough variation, but I still wanna go into the sculpting tool over here and smoothen this bit out. All right, so it's time to start talking over the recording right now because otherwise this series is never gonna finish. 
I'm using the cloth brush to add variation between my two towels over here. And in all honesty, you could use a cloth simulation, but I feel like that's a bit overkill for this scene. The grab brush in sculpting tools is insanely helpful for when geometry is behind other objects and you just want to pull it out. I end up making a new default material and assigning that to both of these towels. And with that done, let's move on to the toothbrush now. I tried coming up with different easier ways to make the toothbrush, but at the end of the day, I just settled for a simple method where you just extrude the edges out and scale them in just until you have the shape that you want and then you refine that shape further. To be honest, this is exactly how 3D modeling is supposed to be done and I was wrong in trying to achieve the complete shape from the get-go. Once I had the basic shape down in one axis, I started working on the other ones and this was achieved by using a combination of different tools. I used the proportional editing tool, I also moved along some vertices by hand, and I also scaled vertices down along a single axis to sort of flatten them out but not completely. The tip is achieved by just inserting it in and extruding it down a little bit. This also gives me a nice area where I can use a particle system for the hair itself. But before we get to that, this brush needs to have a bit more geometry and to do that, I just add in a subdivision surface modifier along with a bevel modifier. Remember, the bevel modifier needs to be on top of it. I do get some artifacts appearing and in order to fix those, I simply just have to add in some loop cuts along the edges. Once I'm happy with the shape, even though it's not really perfect, I just shade it smooth and turn on auto smoothing and call it a day over here. Actually no, because the next step is to select all of the vertices that you want the hairs to appear in, so all the faces actually, and create a new vertex group, and assign those vertices to that group. Then you add in a particle system and just follow along with these settings. You lower the hair count, lower the size of the hair as well, and just see if your brush looks fine. Over here it's a bit too big, but you know, we can make it smaller, that's not really a problem. Once you're done with scaling it down, just take your time and try to fit it in the jar. Remember, you can always double tap X, Y, or Z to rotate an item along its local X, Y, and Z directions. And that's really helpful over here because, for example, when I rotate it and double tap X, I can just rotate the brush and make it easily face the camera. And finally, the hair wasn't really visible in my rendered view, so I had to enable hair in the render settings. Once I was somewhat happy with the design, I just duplicate the brush over and set that one up as well. The toothbrush itself has given me such a headache that I decided to just skip the last thing that's remaining in that jar and I skip over to these, well, these nice looking jars on the left side. They were really simple to make at the end. Uh, all I really needed to do was just scale down the inner loop at the top and add in a bevel modifier to achieve that curved surface. I used a solidify modifier to give it some thickness and then just duplicated it over and scaled it up, moved it in the right spot and just made it a bit taller so it would fit in with the scene. I noticed that the bottle didn't really have a label so I duplicated some faces. I selected the outer edges and shift E to create a crease over there. Actually no, I think it's marking them sharp. Anyway, I pressed shift E and made it sharp so it would be similar to what's in my reference image. And then I just added in a solidify modifier and used shrink wrap to attach it to the bottle itself. Fixing the brushes a little bit, I decided that it's time to do my first render. And I quickly noticed that, yeah, the towels really need to change. So what I did was I just got out of this render and got back into sculpting mode, used the smooth brush and just smoothened everything out because just a little bit. At first glance, it doesn't look like it made a lot of difference, but when you compare both of them, you quickly realize that, yeah, one of them is way, way, way better than the other. So here's the first one, and I'm gonna quickly switch to the second one now. I know it's not a lot of difference, but it really makes it look a lot better. Anyway, so that is it for this entire series, I believe. That's pretty much everything modeled. Yes, I'm not gonna be modeling that plant over there. I hate plants. I can't do organic. I actually can't. I'll learn it someday. <laughs> I can do low poly organic. Actually, that's my next series. Is it a series? No, it's just a couple of videos. Anyway, thanks for watching. Share this with your friends if they actually, you know, they would actually find this interesting. And if you have watched this entire series and you're not subscribed, yeah, please let me know why you're not subscribed. Okay.
let's move on and thanks for watching. Um, okay, so this bit is for only the people who are still watching this video. Hi. Uh, secondly, is there any interest in me doing the materials for this scene? I want to do them procedurally. So if the answer is yes, these are going to be like 15, 20, 30 minute tutorials of me doing a single material from scratch using Blender's nodes, not image textures. Let me know.